In this video, I'm going to show how to replace the fuel injector on this Ram 2500 with a 6.4 liter Hemi. Let's get started. Before we start this job, we need to relieve fuel pressure from the system. The easiest way to do that is to open up the engine compartment fuse box by pressing on these two tabs and lifting the cap up. Looking at it carefully, you can see all of the fuses that are labeled here, as well as the relays. Looking at the rightmost row, you'll see fuel pump motor right here. F70 is the fuse number, and that's the one we're after, because if we pull this, there will be no more fuel pump. And just looking at the overall schematic of the fuses and relays, F70 is right here in the top right area. And looking top down from the top of the fuse box, it's this green 30 amp fuse right here. It's easy to take this fuse out with some needle nose pliers, just be very gentle, of course you don't want to break it. Very gently grab it, wiggle it, and pull it right out. I'm going to sit it right here, that way I don't lose it. Now let's go inside the truck, crank the engine over, and that's going to release the rest of the fuel pressure that's left in the system. The fuel pump isn't running, but the injectors will open up, so of course that's just going to naturally release the fuel pressure. The engine might start, but if it does, it'll stumble really quickly and die out, or it just might not start at all. All right, that's exactly what we were looking for. Fuel pressure has been released. We have to remove the engine cover, so let's start with that. Lift it up in the front. There we go. Should pop off of a couple rubber bushings and then slide it out, set it aside. I'm going to show you how to replace the injector on the passenger side fuel rail because the driver's side is the same procedure, actually a little bit easier because there are less things going across it. As you can see here, there are multiple things involved to get the fuel rail off, whereas on the other side, there's nothing in the way. So I'm just gonna show you how to do the more difficult side. Let's disconnect the main fuel line. There's a red locking tab. There's a clip just like this on the bottom. You have to pry both of them outward and then slide the clip off. Set that aside. And then you have to press right here while pulling out on the line, that's gonna disconnect it. Because we relieved pressure, there shouldn't be fuel spraying out of here, but there will be fuel leaking, so that's why I have this absorbent pad, so I don't make a pool of fuel right down here. Sometimes it's easiest if you very gently use pliers to press on this and pop it off. And there we go, I'm gonna set this aside. Don't bend this line too much. On this rail, the transmission dipstick is mounted on one of the studs that holds the rail down. So, so take a 10 millimeter socket and remove that mounting nut. I recommend against the use of electric power tools at this point because fuel is disconnected. Some power tools can make sparks. So I'm just gonna do this by hand or if you have an air ratchet, you can use that. Take this off. The dipstick looks like it just wants to come out as is, so I'm gonna Leave it. Now we'll need an inverted Torx to pull the studs out. You're gonna want to use an E5 inverted Torx. Slide it right over and pull the studs out that hold the fuel rail on. Lift this up, remove the mounting stud. A little bit further in front, there is another one. Pull this one off as well. Now we have to unplug the injectors, and to do this, there's a locking tab that we have to lift up on. A lot of times these get really stuck on here. There we go. Once that's out, you can grab it, press on that center tab, and unplug it. Do the same to all the others. At this point, you should be able to wiggle the fuel rail and pop the injectors out of the intake. One at a time, take it slow. You don't want to break anything. This is going to be in your way, so just move it. All right, now I'm going to show you how to replace one injector because the procedure is the same for all of them. You just have to hold on to the fuel rail and, well, remove the injectors that you want replaced. I do actually recommend replacing them all at the same time, but for the purposes of this video, we are replacing one so I can show you the procedure. There's a locking clip down here that you have to push out backwards. So I'm gonna grab a pick and try to hook onto it. It's actually quite difficult to see because it's underneath the rail. All right, there it is with the help of the pick. 
I was able to push it out of there. I'm gonna put a rag underneath because at this point, fuel will be leaking out. Take the injector, slide it out. All right, and there it is. I'm gonna plug the hole with my finger. Now take your new injector and slide it up into position. Press it in firmly until it's bottomed out. Careful not to damage it. And the fact that there's fuel in this area actually helps lubricate the O-ring and allows it to slide in a lot easier. And that's bottomed out, so I'm gonna remove this rag. After you've replaced all the injectors, you wanna get the fuel rail ready to go back down. So get the transmission dipstick tube bracket back over and line up the injectors. What you wanna do next is if you have carburetor cleaner or brake parts cleaner, spray the O-rings down a little bit. This is going to temporarily lubricate them. Of course, this is gonna dry out, so we have to move quick, but it's going to allow us to drop the fuel rail and the injectors down into their holes much more easily. Oh, there we go. It's just popped in and that's fully seated right there. Now I'm just going to reconnect all of my fuel injectors. When you do this, make sure the connectors click. And don't forget to lock the locking tabs back in. Let's reinstall the mounting hardware for the fuel rail. Snug this back up. These are tightening down into the plastic intake, so this is bottomed out now. I'm just gonna give it the tiniest bit extra. I don't wanna break anything or strip this out. Just needs to hold the fuel rail on nice and tight without it moving. Everything lined up properly, so I'm not worried about anything. This one bottomed out, a little bit extra, and that's it. Don't forget to put the mounting nut back for the transmission dipstick tube. Bottom this out. Give this about an eighth of a turn after it bottoms out. Plug in the fuel feed line and lock it in. And line up this clip to lock the injector in. Perfect. Let's reinstall the engine cover. Line it up in the back. Once that's in, press it down on the front. Now let's reinstall our fuse. Make sure you put it back in the correct slot. In order to correctly prime the fuel system, what you wanna do is take your key, stick it in the ignition, turn it to the on position. You're gonna hear that fuel pump cycle. That's priming the system. Shut it off, turn it back on. And one more time. I like to do this three times. And now, try to start it. It might stumble a little bit, or it might even completely shut off after a couple seconds. That means there's air in the fuel system. So cycle it again, and then try to start it again if that's the case for you. Perfect. Looks like everything works. I'm gonna let it idle for a little bit, make sure everything's good. Of course, you wanna check for leaks everywhere. Other than that, job is done. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.